In this section, we're going to be talking about gas laws. So we'll start with four basic gas laws and then combine them all together. Our four basic gas laws are Amontin's law, which relates pressure and temperature, Charles's law, which relates volume and temperature, Boyle's law, which relates volume and pressure, and Avogadro's law, which relates volume and moles. We're going to combine all of those together into what we call the ideal gas law, which relates pressure, volume, moles, and temperature all at the same time. Our first gas law is Amontin's law. Amontin's law tells us that pressure and temperature are directly proportional. So as one goes up, the other goes up. As one goes down, the other goes down. We could write this as a proportionality equation. Pressure is proportional to temperature. Or we could write it as an equality equation. Pressure is equal to some constant times temperature. This equation is going to be true in a variety of different circumstances. Let's say we had circumstance one. Pressure one is equal to constant times temperature one. Pressure two in a new set of circumstances would be equal to that same constant times temperature two. We can rearrange those equations and solve for the constant. To do that, we divide both sides by the temperature. We get constant equals pressure one divided by temperature one and constant equals pressure two divided by temperature two. It's the same constant in both cases. Since it's the same, we can set the things on the other side of the equal sign equal to each other. Pressure one over temperature one equals pressure two over temperature two. This is going to be the form of the equation that we're most likely to use, the before and after set of equations. We have a before set of circumstances, which is labeled with one, and an after set of circumstances, which is labeled with two. The pressure can be in any unit, as long as it is consistent on both sides of the equation. The temperature, however, must be in Kelvin. Any time that we use any of our gas laws, the temperatures have to be in Kelvin. If they're given in Celsius, convert to Kelvin before plugging into the equation. If you look at the picture, the hot plate is off, and the pressure is low for that gas. When the hot plate is on medium heat, the pressure is about medium, and when the hot plate is on high, the pressure is high. So as the temperature went up, the pressure went up. They're directly proportional. Amontin's law assumes that moles and volume are held constant. If those two things are not held constant, then we can't use Amontin's law. We can graph the data for Amontin's law, and we should get a nice straight line. We could put pressure on our y-axis and temperature in Kelvin on our x, or the other way around. Either way, we should get a straight line. As the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up, and vice versa. Let's look at an example using a mountain's law. We have a can of hairspray that contains some isobutane gas, and the can has a warning label that says, store only at temperatures below 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not incinerate. The question is, why? Amontin's law tells us that as temperature increases, pressure also increases. So the hotter it gets, the higher the pressure. And eventually, it could be so much pressure that the can could explode. We can do some calculations using Amontin's law to answer part B. The gas in the can is initially 24 degrees Celsius and 360 kilopascals of pressure and the can has a volume of 350 milliliters. The question is, what is the new pressure when the temperature reaches 50 degrees Celsius? Before we use Amontin's law, we need to identify our variables. T1 is going to be 24 degrees Celsius plus 273.15 to convert it into Kelvin. Always remember to convert to Kelvin. We come out with a T1 of 297.15 Kelvin. T1 is 360 kilopascals. T2 is 50 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, which gives us 323.15 Kelvin. We want to use Amontin's law, which is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. But it's better to rearrange the equation first and then plug in variables. We are trying to solve for the new pressure in the can, P2. So we need to get P2 by itself on one side of the equal sign. To do that, we would multiply both sides by T2. Our rearranged equation 
is P2 equals P1 times T2 divided by T1. Now we can plug in our actual values. P1 and T2 go on the top, and we plug in for T1 on the bottom, and come out with 391 kilopascals. The units are kilopascals because that is the same as the units for P1. Notice how Kelvin and Kelvin would cancel out in the equation, leaving us with kilopascals. For all of our gas laws, we should be able to make some sense of our answer based on the relationships we know between the variables. In this problem, the temperature increases from 24 to 50 degrees Celsius. We know from Amontan's law that as temperature goes up, the pressure should also go up. In fact, it does. It goes up from 360 to 391 kilopascals. Our second gas law is Charles's law. Charles's law tells us that volume and temperature are directly proportional to each other. So as volume goes up, temperature goes up, etc. Again, we could write it as a proportionality equation. Volume is proportional to temperature. Or we could write it as an equality equation. Volume equals some constant times temperature. This could be true in a variety of different circumstances. So V1 equals constant times T1, and V2 equals constant times T2. We could rearrange those and solve for the constant, set them equal to each other, and come out with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That's the form of Charles's law that we're likely to use. Again, the temperatures must be in Kelvin, but volume can be any unit as long as it's the same for both V1 and V2. I encourage you to click on the link in the slides that says liquid nitrogen balloon video. I have in picture form something similar to what the video shows. At a higher temperature, let's say room temperature, the balloon is fully inflated. But at a lower temperature, when we pour on the really cold liquid nitrogen, the balloon compacts. It crumples up because it's losing volume. At the lower temperature, its volume is decreased. Similarly to Amontan's law, Charles's law makes some assumptions. Charles's law assumes that moles and pressure are held constant. So long as those two variables are held constant, the other two variables, temperature and volume, can vary with each other in a linear way. We can see that linear relationship by graphing Charles's law data. We could put volume on the y-axis and temperature in Kelvin on the x, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. The graph should show a straight line such that as temperature goes up, volume goes up, and so on. Let's look at an example calculation. We have a sample of carbon dioxide that takes up 0 0.300 liters at 10 degrees Celsius and 750 torr. The question is, what volume will the gas have at 30 degrees Celsius and 750 torr? The 750 torr is just there to tell us that the pressure is being held constant, which means that Charles's law does apply. We are really just doing the calculation with volume and temperature. V1, the initial volume, is 0 0.300 liters. T1 is 10 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, which makes 283.15 Kelvin. T2, the new temperature, is 30 plus 273.15, which makes 303.15 Kelvin. We're plugging into the Charles's Law equation. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We need to identify which variable we're trying to solve for. In this case, we're trying to find the new volume, V2. We need to get V2 by itself on one side of the equal sign. To do that, we're going to multiply both sides by T2. Our rearranged equation becomes V2 equals V1 times T2 divided by T1. After rearranging, we plug in our values. We come out with 0 0.321 liters. Notice we get liters because that was the unit for V1, and Kelvin ended up canceling out in our calculation. Our answer should make sense with what we know from Charles's law. The temperature is going up from 10 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees, so we expect the volume to go up. It does. It goes up from 0 0.300 to 0 0.321 liters. 
A balloon is blown up in the morning when the temperature is 23.0 degrees Celsius to a volume of 1.50 liters. If this balloon is left in a hot car and inflates to a new volume of 1.56 liters, what must be the new temperature in the car? Is it A, 11.6 degrees Celsius, B, 23.9 degrees Celsius, C, 308 degrees Celsius, or D, 34.8 degrees Celsius? The correct answer is D, 34.8 degrees Celsius. Remember, as you're using the equation, the temperature has to be in Kelvin, so you would need to change the 23 degrees Celsius into Kelvin to use the equation. But then the answer that you get out of the equation will also be in Kelvin. So at the end, you'll have to change from Kelvin into Celsius by subtracting 273.15. Again, the answer should make sense based on what we know from Charles's law. The volume increased from 1.50 to 1.56 liters, so the temperature must have increased. In fact, it increased from 23.0 degrees Celsius to 34.8 degrees Celsius.